You probably know somebody who just seems to be able to get through anything that happens in their life. Difficult times, stressful times, and they just seem to have a strength within them that allows them to make it through. And sometimes even stronger on the other side. These are people who have stress resiliency, and you can too. There are actual habits, there are actual behaviors that you can begin to bring into your life. And I wanna share some of those today with you because I just finished an amazing workshop with Dr. Waugh on the habits of stress resilient people. I'm Lori Soleil with Soleil Creative. I'm an award-winning hypnotherapist, mindset and spiritual growth coach. And I wanna share some tips with you today, so stay tuned. Today I attended this wonderful workshop by Dr. Waugh, giving him many, many, many kudos. He is at Wake Forest University. He's an associate professor at the Department of Psychology at Wake Forest. And I loved the way he talked about the fact that we can take control over our level of contentment, happiness and fulfillment, and even more importantly, our health in our life. I wanna kind of let you know, I'm in a beautiful hotel on the inside, there's a pool and there's some kids, which is so wonderful. I can remember being in hotels and wanting to swim and get excited no matter what the temperature is. So you're gonna hear a little bit of that, but I love that, I love hearing kids. And that's another really important thing I'll bring up later. But you can definitely build stress resiliency. It's a practical skill. And the first piece that I find really powerful because it's, what, it's the work that I do is it's about mindset. It's about perception. It's about reframing, reframing circumstances, but it's not about avoidance. So that's the thing. It's de defining your strengths and values, having something powerful and important to live for, knowing that within yourself, and then deciding that you're going to get through the difficult times, sometimes with acceptance, certain things we can't control, but a lot of what we can control, we want to be proactive. We want to be proactive and we want to be grateful for where we're at. So these are some of the pieces that he talked about in his workshop today. I loved that he also discussed certain studies around um, the marshmallow study. I'm going to have to find that and, and share it with you because <laughs> it had to do with delayed gratification. And when we can do that, we're building a muscle within us that isn't just about the you know immediate uh, immediate gratification because that starts a different kind of cycle in our brain which can be detrimental to us especially as it relates to dopamine we're talking about kind of addictive habits but we're also talking about behavior that is supporting an unresourceful bad habit and what he said at the very beginning and I've known this because this is what I study we are pretty much a collection of habits our day is primarily habit driven. And so if you find yourself that you're in a cycle of negativity or rumination, you want to begin to shine the light on it so that you can change it. Those habits have detrimental impacts on our long term health. Because stress, the truth is stress is not a bad thing. We need stress in our life to keep us strong. And in physics, stress talks about knowing and understanding the stressors of say a building or a bridge and how applying stress is going to make it stronger but not to the point where we have something so big that it breaks us but what dr Waugh said is we are really built to handle a lot of pressure and a lot of stress and much of it is how we handle it much of it is how we think about it so i wanted to share a couple things that you can say during circumstances let's just start with language let's just start with how we talk to ourselves. When we talk to ourselves, our words create a visual image in our mind. And I love that Dr. Wah also validated what I've been telling my clients for a while, that focus on what you want, not what you don't want. So a lot of times when people are saying, I don't want to be poor, they're actually thinking about being poor. The brain doesn't really understand no or don't. It negates it. It's creating a visual image of you being poor, and then that's continuing to create your reality. So rather, speak about what it is you want instead. You can also reframe what you're going through because the other piece that he validated was that we, our emotions are not independent. How do I say this? They are, you can have multiple emotions at once. 
So just because you're having what you would perceive as a negative emotion doesn't mean that there isn't room for a more positive emotion. And you can think about situations in your life that are complex, like I have lots of friends right now that are empty nesters, and so they're feeling an immense sense of pride and excitement for their child who is leaving, and at the same time they're grieving because they're leaving. So it's complex. And the more we can acknowledge and recognize our emotions, but more importantly, begin to really refine them and understand them, that their communication, they're, they're telling us that something's going on, the more emotionally intelligent we be, when, that we become. But what I wanted to share with you was some of the reframes in the statements, thoughts that can control emotions. So let me read these to you because I like them. They're really good. Uh, something happens, well, it's not as bad as I first thought. Hmm, I'm reframing that. Or, this won't last forever. This will be better soon, right? Looking forward, future pacing, looking at your future self. This will be even better than before. Huh, looking at it like it could be better. This is worth it. So what you're going through is worth it. And I remember that from my own example going through a very difficult time in my family where I knew I had to get through it. I knew I needed to do it. And I knew that when I got to the other side, it was gonna be incredibly worth it. This is normal, right? A lot of times we think, oh my God, we're the only one feeling this. Well, no, actually this is very normal. This is a great question. I've heard this before. How will I feel about this tomorrow, next year, 10 years? And then what would I tell a friend in this situation? So these are all really great questions to help you take control of an emotional state. And that's really what we, where we wanna be. We wanna be able to observe, go, yes, that's a valid emotion. I'm going through that right now, that makes sense. Yes, I can also feel this too at the same time. And emotions are energy in motion, and so as we honor them, reflect on them, and give them the validation that we want to get, that they want, that we want, it's part of us, then they can begin to move on. So I hope that helps. I appreciate being able to share in real time the things that I'm learning with you because I'm here to support. I'm devoted to helping you create transformational changes that have positive lasting impacts, imp impacts impacts on your life. I'm listening to the kids and I want to go swimming. So thanks for now. Rem remember to subscribe because I'm bringing you great stuff like this.